you want to build a successful business, it will serve you much better if you can create a new category. Because if you create a new category, you're not competing with anyone. You know, if you, as soon as you're second or third to an existing category, you're competing with those guys who've already got a really you know, strong position in that category. And it's very, very difficult to, to grow a business in that position. Welcome. To Corporate Warrior, the podcast that brings you the best advice on how to improve your health, optimize performance, and maximize productivity with your host, Lawrence Neal. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I have ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, is intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized by many high-intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world-class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years' experience training clients and is supervisor of a 15 15,000 high-intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high-intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high-intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite-sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course. So this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer, but you want to learn more about high-intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount on any course you purchase, simply head on over to hituni.com, that's H-I-T-U-N-I U-N-I dot com, and enter the coupon code CW10, that's CW and the number 10. So again, Head on over to hituni.com, pick your course, and enter the coupon code CW10 for 10% discount. Thank you for your support. Hi guys, I'm Lawrence Neal and welcome to another episode of Corporate Warrior, the podcast that teaches you how to optimize your high intensity training protocol and your high intensity training business to help you achieve your health, fitness and business goals. My former guests include people like Skylar Tanner, Dr. Chris Scott, Andy Galpin, PhD, Adam Zickerman, Keith Norris, Bill De Simone, David Allen and many, many more. 
In this episode, I am interviewed by Patrick and Oliver over at NorCal Strength Studio. So thank you guys. You did a wonderful job. I really, really enjoyed being interviewed by you guys. And if anyone else is out there who's got a podcast um, on the subject of exercise or business or productivity or whatever, fill in the blank, I would absolutely love to be on your show. So please do reach out to me uh, and you can literally send me an email to lnil2 at gmail.com. That's LN for November, Echo Alpha Lima 2, the number 2, at gmail.com and let me know if you're interested. Because obviously, if you invite me on your show, I will obviously share that show with all of my listeners and my audience too. So it's a win-win. In this episode, we discuss how to prepare podcast interviews, how to get high profile guests, the top lessons I've learned interviewing 80 plus experts on things like high intensity training and diet and business, the importance of focusing on the right category in your business and how to make high intensity training a force to be reckoned with in the health and fitness industry and much more. For all the show notes and links for this episode and all episodes, please go to corporatewarrior.org and don't forget to hang around at the end of this episode for your free gift. And now I give you yours truly. So please enjoy. Hello, welcome to NorCal Strength Studio. We specialize in um, in high-intensity strength training, metabolic conditioning in Los Gatos, California. Today we have Lawrence Neal. He is the host and founder of Corporate Warrior, specifically talk about HIT and HIT business optimization. Uh, He's interviewed a few guests, a bunch of guests actually, Drew Bay, for example, Dr. Doug McGuff. David Landau, Mark Sisson, and a whole bunch like Jay Vincent. So uh, welcome, Lawrence. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on your show. So tell our audience how you got started with your podcast and why specifically HIT. Mm. Good question. So uh, it was a complete accident. <laughs> is the abbreviated answer. So uh, I I had been interested in doing my own business for a long period of time. Um, and when I was in my early 20s, I was working in a career in sales in London. And I kind of knew early on that I wanted to be my own boss and do my own business. So I, I kept trying different things. I kept trying to create you know, info products and affiliate blogs and things that would make me money online, basically. And uh, tried a load of things and nothing really worked. And I couldn't think of anything that would really resonate or uh, nothing I did really resonated with people. Um Eventually, I created the the kind of Corporate Warrior blog uh, thanks to my best friend who actually coined the name Corporate Warrior, um, which is a whole other story. But I created this blog and I just started blogging about health and fitness, which is something I was passionate about since the age of probably 15. Um, and then I picked up Body by Science. I can't remember. Oh, that's it. So I watched Dr. Doug McGuff's uh, presentation on the 21 convention, uh, which I think is called like paleo and biochemistry or something rather amazing presentation. I'm sure you're probably familiar with it. It was a huge game changer for me in terms of describing high intensity training and, uh, paleo diet and how these things affect us at the cellular level. So that was big. And after after watching that, I immediately went out and bought Body by Science. I was blown away by the book, but I had so many questions. I was like, oh, I want, I'd love to interview Doug uh, just to ask him a ton of questions that I had. I'm sure many people had questions after reading that book. So I reached out to him and I asked him if I could interview him. And Doug being the lovely guy that he is, uh, as I'm sure you, you, you guys are aware of, because you did a great interview with him too, um, he gave me some of his time to, to do that, which was which was great at the time you know i had no real audience nothing and we did the interview i put it on the website uh i didn't really i didn't really plan to create a podcast but it got a really good response people i got some good comments i got some really nice emails social media and i did more of it so i thought okay i'll go and talk to other people like drew bay and i kind of like i like the format i like interviewing people i like to talk um probably a bit too much so i i enjoyed that format and um 
it was really resonating with people. And I could see that finally I was doing something that I was interested in, but also people were getting kind of value out of. So that motivated me to keep doing it. And ultimately with any, I guess, successful business or any type of like, I don't know, success in building an audience, you have to sustain that work output on a regular basis and keep getting better. So that's how it all started, really. Oh, wow. Now, um, did you dig deeper in your um, research of high intensity, like you read up stuff like about Arthur Jones and Mike Menser, Ken Hutchins and Ellington Darden and all those guys? So I'm probably not as well read as a lot of my listeners would hope. Um, although I have read the Mike Menser way, uh, which John Little wrote. Um, you know, I've read some of the bulletins by Arthur Jones. I've not read anything by Ken Hutchins, although I have read a couple of books. I read Body Fat Breakthrough and The New High Intensity Training by Linton Darden. So I have read fairly well, I suppose, in high right. intensity training because, you know, like a lot of my listeners and I'm sure a lot of yours, um, I'm really passionate about learning more about this particular way of exercising and getting the most out of it um, and constantly looking for the magic bullets of hypertrophy and things like that. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how much I suppose reading I've done there. You know, what's funny you bring up like you're, you're, I mean, it, lately I've just been getting into this, even though heavy duty or hits more metabolic conditioning, this whole metabolic conditioning is really blowing me away. Just, just peep that lately I've been training a few clients and I've been doing a uh, Drew Bay's three by three Metcon type training. Cool. And, and you know, I'll, of course I'll tweak it and I have clients who, who would finish the Metcon in about 21, 29 minutes and they're wasted. Two weeks later, they do it again. They all shave off anywhere from six to eight minutes. I mean, they've recovered and actually improved upon, improved on their um, conditioning. It's amazing. Now, with your own, uh, with your own workout, because I know you play basketball as well. Do you find your conditioning has gotten much better? I've never. So I've not actually played around with the free by free. I'm familiar with it. I think in Project Kratos, Drew calls it the Cerberus workout or something like that. Um, I, it's hard for me to say whether or not high intensity training has really contributed to my conditioning on the basketball court because obviously all of these different skills are very specific. So I find that with basketball, once I've played a couple times, you know, I, I build up that level of fitness that's specific to that. Um, so it's hard because even though I want to be able to say high intensity strength training has definitely, um, improve my my conditioning in basketball if i don't play basketball for a long period of time and i play having done high intensity training in the background the whole time i suck and my my yeah. my, my conditioning is awful um that being said you know i don't really do a great deal of i suppose running these days but i could go outside right now and probably run 10 miles and you know not do it not getting a fantastic time, but I could do it fairly well. So I do think there is, there is obviously a lot of transfer, um, uh, from high intensity training, but yeah, basketball, I can't honestly say that it's had a huge impact. It's probably had more of a benefit in terms of helping to reduce injury, improving my, it's definitely improve my ability to be explosive. Um, mm -hmm. so my speed, uh, my ability to jump and rebound the basketball and uh, stuff like that has definitely improved as a result of high intensity training. It's funny you say that. There's a lot of truth to that because maybe about seven or eight years ago, I used to do uh, grappling, and um, I would all I did was I trained my grappling and I would do my heavy duty training and nothing else. But my, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, just like anything, I didn't do an explosive movement, just nice slow control. But when I would be on the ground, you know, I was pretty explosive and I wouldn't gas out as much. I guess, you know, especially with grappling, a lot of that push pulling, I think it, it, it tr transferred pretty good in terms of conditioning and strength. It worked really well for me. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, what I was going to ask you next is the process of getting getting some getting to interview someone how could you take us through that process how you get them the questions you had your preparation because you're like an expert at this and i'm just beginning 
Oh, that's so that's so flattering because I ask people the same questions and I do not consider myself an expert. But I'm happy to tell you all all that I know. Um, so yeah, I guess in terms of getting guests, I mean, it sounds really simple, but obviously just having the balls and the confidence to just reach out. And can I swear on this podcast? Is that allowed? Uh, <laughs> cool. Um, so. Not that I was going to swear, but, um, yeah, just, just literally, you know, reaching out to potential guests through email on their website, through their contact form, uh, through social media. You know, obviously some guests are going to be harder than others. Generally, if they're higher profile, they're harder to get. Um, so that can be challenging, but. The really important thing is just making sure that I guess your, your pitch, which ultimately is a pitch on your initial email is effective. Um, so I have a template I follow, which is essentially covers off these key areas, which is the, the number of downloads I get on a monthly basis. Um, the guests I featured before. So that's kind of like social proof. Um, and trying to make it very clear to them as how this is going to benefit their brand. And if they have a business, their business. And trying to get that all in a very succinct email. And I have a template that I just reuse and I tailor it, which sounds really bad if my guests are going to hear this, um, which I can just send over to you and you can share with the uh, audience if you want to. Um, and then in terms of, in terms of preparation, oh, actually, I will also add, I use something called Boomerang and email, which is really good extension for Gmail, which enables you to, um, ping emails back if you don't get a response. So if I email a guest and I don't hear from them uh, and I really want to get them on the show, sometimes I, I'm not massively fast if they don't get back to me and I'll just move on. But if I really want to get them on the show, I'll have it boomerang me in, let's say, a week or two weeks and I will follow up. And I'll just you know write a, a short email just saying, hey, don't know if you saw my email below. Hit just to reiterate, this is what my podcast is about. Love to have you on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'll do that. And uh, that works fairly well because you do have to be, um, uh, what's the word? You have to be tenacious to get people's attention these days. Um, and then in terms of preparation, I will say that my best podcasts are generally the ones where I prepare the most. I recently felt quite insecure when I listened to James Old to just say that he, and he has a very successful podcast, that he spends something like, I think it's five or 10 hours for every hour he does an interview in terms of prep, which is a lot. Um, so I spend, I spend more now, but I did go through a phase where I was spending a bit less and I noticed that my interviews weren't as, as I think as effective as they could have been. Um, but I, I do try to spend, I do try to, if they've wrote books, I try and read at least one or two of their books. I try and listen to a couple of their latest interviews so that I can make sure I'm creating unique content. Um, I've got a, a, a list of like stock questions that I like to ask, uh, within high intensity training or just general questions, kind of like rapid fire questions. So I pull from a list of those. So I have like a, I, I have a checklist of things that I go through prior to an interview just to make sure that I'm as, as best prepared as possible. But a lot of this stuff is really repetitive. So it's good to have a checklist so that you're more efficient and effective when you go about it. Wow. Uh, so what was that app? Is it called Boomerang? Yeah, it's a, it's an, ex, it's, you can, it's a free Chrome extension. Oh, it's not free actually. It's, uh, I think it's $5 a month or something like that. Uh, I think actually, I think the, the very basic version is free, but I pay for it because I use it quite a lot. Uh, yeah, it's just a free extension. It's, it's for Gmail, but also I think you can use it for Outlook. Massively useful because it means you don't have to remember to follow up on guests, you know? Um, so it takes that load off your mind. There's other alternatives. There's another one called follow up CC, which does the same kind of thing, a bit, a little bit more sophisticated. So, so Mike, no, <laughs> it's funny. You said, now I'm going to ask you since I'm interviewing you, what would be the questions you'd be asking Lawrence Neal right now? <laughs> if you were like, right. I mean, that's very meta. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's funny because I, I'm thinking of questions that you could ask me, but I'd be kind of scared to answer, but they'd right. probably be quite good. But like, um, obviously I've interviewed, you know, I've done 80, I think 80 episodes today, um, with 
lots of the top guys in the high intensity training field uh, and just the kind of health and fitness field in general. Um, so I guess a good question would be, what have I learned from all of those guys? <laughs> and that, that was back to my next question. Um, so with all the knowledge you've acquired, interviewing all these hit experts, right? Um, what, and then listening to their protocol, their workout, um, have you came up and put together your own workout that would actually work for you? Cause you know, as you know, like Drew Bay has his own way. It's all within the hit umbrella, but they like David Landau, for example, he's more, he's a little different. He doesn't believe in uh, right. That was, you know, if you ask me, that's one of the interviews that stuck with me the most, like, man, that guy is something else. I mean, <laughs> he just shoots from the hip. He doesn't care what, what, what you think, you know? And I like that. I, I love that. The guy, I mean, the second and first interview is like, wow, he's, he brought, you brought him again. The second interview is like, this guy is, he's a character. He's something else, yeah. you know? I mean, so yeah. So did you put together a workout? Um, like what, what do you, what would you want me to say? Kind of like, uh, what's been the most productive workout in terms of what I've learned from all of the guests? Right, right. That's, that's, <laughs> which, uh, it's not a very sexy answer, unfortunately. Um, because the more, the more interviews I do, the more I realize that it's not, I, I, not that I realize, but that I believe it's not that complicated. I think, you know, most of my, most of my listeners, care mostly about optimizing muscular hypertrophy i think i can't say for certain but i think a lot of my audience are quite like me you know they're quite ectomorphic uh and they're looking for the the kind of best ways to build muscle and, and obviously they are interested in the other other adaptations too and other outcomes but that's a big one um and i think from that point of view you know building muscle mass improving bone mineral density stuff like that i just think you know working out one set to failure once or twice a week doing five to eight exercises, mostly big movements, mostly compound, it's going to get you there. It's going to get you 90% of the results, in my opinion. Um, I am very fascinated about this, this stuff around high frequency. Um, I'm actually interviewing Ted Naiman again later today. Um, which is I'm looking forward to because he's experimented with working out to failure every single day, um, full body. And he looks great. I mean, I don't know if he's increased muscle mass, uh, you know, over and above what he would have if he was just working out like once a week. It's difficult to say. And uh, maybe it's impossible to say. Um, but he looks great and it's, it's fascinating N equals one. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to talking to him about that. But yeah, again, going back to what I was saying, I think if you're doing those things, if you're, you know, working out, single set to failure once or twice a week and you're eating a whole food diet um i suppose i i tend to veer more towards the kind of low carb high fat side of things um mostly you know animal protein some vegetables some carbohydrates um i think you're going to get all you can get from in terms of optimizing your body composition so getting a growing as much muscle mass as you can because ultimately as you you know if you've listened to my interviews with Jay Vincent, um, and he's a really good example of this. Like it, genetics play a huge role in terms of your potential for all of the outcomes from exercise. And I think they're downplayed too much. Um, and I think people like to downplay them because they like to put more emphasis behind their, whatever, it, whatever it is they're selling from a, uh, workout point of view. Um, so I think, yeah, I think Jay's a good example of, look, I do nothing. There's no secret. I do nothing that's actually that special, but I, you know, he looks unbelievable. So, oh, yeah. so it's, I mean, you know, a lot of people think he's on steroids and things like that. I said to him, he should do some kind of like steroid test and like publish the results online <laughs> just to show people like, uh, but like, obviously that's up to him. He doesn't have to do that at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that in terms of like, optimizing results that i've learned that it's 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 re i believe it's really not that complicated um and just not to get obsessed about it i think when you become obsessed about it um if you're not one to gain muscle very easily it can really derail you and cause you to be very unhappy so i really try and 
communicate to people that it's just not worthwhile to feel like that and really accept your genetic limits. Keep trying to improve, but just, you know, accept that that you will only gain so much muscle, you know, and that having big arms doesn't define how manly or whatever you are, say, or, or womanly. Um, so yeah, though, that's, I don't know if you want me to elaborate on that, but from a, for, I guess that's what people care about the most, right? Generally is like losing right. fat and building muscle. Um, so that's what I've, that's what I've learned from that perspective. So what, what kind of gains have you, uh, gotten from, uh, the, the workout since you've started and how long have you been doing hit? So I've been doing hit for like probably about that's hard to say actually for about six or seven years i think um i probably i probably got most of my gains um when i because i've been working out doing strength training since i was like 17 18 and i probably got most of my muscular gain in that kind of first six year period so i don't think moving to high intensity training has necessarily increased my muscle mass it's just, it maybe has a little bit, um, but it's just enabled me to maintain what I've developed with very, very little time, right? And very little, well, I wouldn't say little effort, a lot of effort in a short amount of time. Um, but what it has enabled me to do is increase my strength significantly and, right. and like really help me, I think, uh, dial in on my overall body composition. So really help me to, become very very lean um to it to it in a healthy sense so that's what i would say i mean i probably i'm not me- i can't say like i never measured it exactly like how much muscle mass i gained having moved to that um i don't really know so yeah now i know you moved to you said you're in ireland and i remember you before you moved there you were training at a facility called kaiser 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 i think is how it's yeah so, um, what, 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 I know there's a lot of the hydraulic, isn't it? Hydraulic, hydraulic, uh, where you press the button left and right. Uh, Kisa is like medex based. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's so, not, it's not selectorized machines there, no? No, no, no. They're, they're whole, well, the, at least the gym they had in North London is, uh, completely kitted out with medex. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. I miss it so much. <laughs> I know you keep saying that in some of your interviews. Now, now that you're in Ireland, um, I noticed in some of your talks that you've been doing a Drew based body weight exercise. That's right. How's that coming along? It's pretty awesome. Like I really, really? enjoy it. Yeah, like, I've definitely uh, waxed and waned in terms of the focus on my workouts. And when I lo- since speaking to Drew last about project creator specifically it's given me a little bit more it's sort of reinvigorated my motivation to want to increase the difficulty of my exercises um so for instance i got i got very good at performing a chin-up with great form in my opinion as drew's never watched me do a chin-up he might think differently um because he's such a perfectionist but um i got to a point where i could do a chin-up you know Pretty long time under load, very, very smooth turnarounds, just really, really good form. And now I've moved to doing the hard partial. So just kind of concentrating in that really difficult range of motion at the top and then really contracting hard at the very top at full contraction to fatigue the musculature. And I've, I'm enjoying really challenging myself and kind of going through this progressive training system. So I should also say I've just came off the back of a very, very tough week. Uh, not, not tough from a training point of view. Um, but I, I traveled to the UK for a music concert. Um, with Craig David, who I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, he's pretty big in the US now. He's, <laughs> he speaks to his colleague. Um, so, uh, my my college friends and I were a big fan of Craig, so we went to see him perform uh, in the UK. There was some drinking to be had, uh, so we drank some alcohol. And then the next day, I had to do an ARX workout, right? An ARX is is for anyone that knows it's or for anyone that doesn't know it's it, it provides kind of like motorized uh, controlled resistance, and it can provide a very tough negative resistance. So. I did that workout and then I, uh, what did I do after that? And then I flew to Spain for a stag party 
right? And then I spent three days in Spain and I actually did a workout in Spain because I'm a fool. But basically I stacked all of these stresses and they absolutely destroyed me. And it made me realize just don't stack your stresses and don't work out after you get off a plane. It's like the stupidest thing you can do. Um, so I don't know. I've digressed here. I know, but like <laughs> it literally knocked me out for a whole week. For a whole week, I was just sick and not in a good place. Um, so with that, it kind of took me off this. You know, I, I'd stopped doing the body weight training at least a week before the ARX because I wanted to be fresh for that. Uh, right. That being said, I wasn't exactly fresh because I was hungover. Um, but yes, but back to what you what you're saying. I am I am uh, looking forward to getting back into Project Creators probably tomorrow. But I, I only got I only started getting better really on the weekend from this week of debauchery. So um, so yes, but no, it's uh, it's a great system. I'm a big fan. I wouldn't be promoting it all the time if I didn't think it was great. Um, so no, I do encourage people who haven't got the access because let's be honest, like. If I had a Medex or Nautilus facility down the road, I'd be there in a heartbeat. I'd pay, I'd pay like, you know, two hundred dollars a month to do that, right? Maybe more, uh, just because I I love those those uh, those machines, and you know, um, I really enjoyed the ARX machine. And I, if there was one of those locally, I'd use that too. Uh, but I, I unfortunately, Galway has absolutely sod all in terms of in terms of facilities and those types of machines. Uh, so there are some good gyms, but there's no, there's no gyms that have those types of machines. So yeah, I, I've opted for kind of like a hybrid split where I do a body weight project Kratos workout at home one day. And then kind of my B routine is done at the local gym where they've got like, a pr- you know, an acceptable seated row and overhead press, which I'll work into a, another kind of hybrid body weight machine workout. So that's kind of my workout at the moment. It sounds like Ireland needs a corporate warrior gym. Well, potentially that's definitely on the cards. I, I was just, <laughs> I was just, um, I was just with Matt in, uh, who runs Mint Fitness in Brighton and he's got an ARX machine there and he specializes in high intensity training. Great guy. And I was asking all the questions about his business and the business model and all the numbers and all that stuff. And obviously I had Jay Vinson on recently about building a business. And so I have all the knowledge. <laughs> I have no excuses not to do it. And I want to do it. If, even if it's just at first just to build a facility with or at least a facility with the machines just for kind of personal use, but there'd obviously be the, the the business there too but i would love it for personal use as well um so i think yeah a medium-term project once i have the capital to invest in something like that is definitely something i want to do maybe i say medium term maybe long term who knows now, do you have any clients you train right now or is it just you specifically no just- i i did do like kind of one-on-one health coaching for a little bit uh, but that was more fat loss and i i didn't do training i i would just sit down with people and kind of consult so i did that for a little bit but i decided to focus more on a podcast because i realized i could help more people in this format uh, and i just enjoyed it more um i train my girlfriend if that counts she does high intensity training i count (laughs) but no i don't train people (laughs) have you ever tried that machine called x-force I have not. I have not. I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, I recently recorded a round table, which wasn't the, the, the guests weren't very, uh, fond of the X force, I will say, but that, that will be revealed. Um, so no, I, I, I don't know too much about it. I've heard about it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. What was the round table fond of the ARX? They were, they were. Oh. <laughs> hey, so um, just recently I found out Joan Sharkey, um, I don't know if you're familiar with her, she is the person that's in charge of Mike Menser's um, website, MikeMenser.com, cool. and she will be retiring, so she said that after, I guess she's going in stages, her phase is re- um, shutting down the website because, you know, I guess it's, you know, just too much for her. So I was wondering, would you ever do an interview with Joan Sharkey? That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, this sounds sounds like that could be really cool. Yeah, I yeah. mean, hook me up, do an intro over email, and we'll we'll look into that. 
Well, I'd like to interview her first, though. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> All right. So we're coming to the, the end. Um, how can our audience get a hold of you? Of course, they know you're the corporate warrior. And what are the new things you, you're doing right now, if anything? So, uh, yeah, best way to find out more about the podcast is go to corporatewarrior.org and that's will take you to my podcast page and all of the episodes are listed there. So you can just click. It's like an a la carte. You can pick and select, you know, what episodes you want to listen to. And each episode has a whole bunch of like resources and show notes and links. Um, what am I working on? Well, I'm very pleased to say that. Uh, I've since secured a few sponsors, which, um, uh, making this business, thank you, which are making this business, uh, sustainable and, uh, it means that I can focus on it full time and continue to do so. Um, I don't know if, well, some of my listeners know that, um, I used to work in a, a career in IT sales in London and I did this on the side and now I'm in Ireland doing this full time. So I was kind of stressed out thinking, how can I make this, how can I make this work? So really pleased to say that. So my real focus now is really on working on honing my craft, like trying to become a better interviewer, um, trying to get on. I've got some great guests lined up and I'm trying to get on. Wait. We're sorry. I can't wait for your interview. Yeah. No, I appreciate I'm, it. I'm like, who's who, wait, so can you say who you got lined up? Oh, man. Uh, can you I, that information? I can. <laughs> no, I can. I don't, I don't mind. I've got, uh, who have I got? Teresa Ambrose coming on. Who, she's a PhD um, and she focuses on aging in regard to, and, and, and how, you know, resistance training and the effects on that. Um Damn, who else? I got Ted Naiman, as I mentioned, coming on again. That was my most popular episode of all time, the one with Ted Naiman. So he comes, Dr. Ted Naiman's coming on again. Um, I've got Kevin Cruz, who's a productivity guru, uh, but so that would be more for the kind of high intensity training business guys in terms right. of like, and he's a top guy. He's got a podcast called Extreme Productivity, I think, and it's very, very good in terms of, you know, helping entrepreneurs become more productive and stuff like that. Um, who else have I got? Oh, man. Oh, I've got uh, Stuart Phillips coming on from McMaster University. Oh, Dr. Stuart my Phillips. God. That would be awesome right there with all his research on oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I've got to, I've got to read up. I get told off by James Steele that I don't do enough, uh, reading of studies. So I need to get my, uh, my, my reading on and make sure I'm, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with all the latest literature, which I am to an extent, but I, I need to do more prep. So yes, I'm very excited about that. Stuart is, uh, yeah, really top in his field. So yeah. So last thing I remember, uh, I think it's one of your, I don't know, with your Facebook posts. You said something that um, you, I guess you started with HIT and you kind of diverted and started doing other interviews and you're deciding to go back and do more specifically HIT again. That's right. So this is something I, I do battle with and uh, I'm still working out, but I, I, I wanted always to do something that I'm, I'm passionate about and interested in. Hence why the original tagline was health, business and time optimization. Cause I am obsessed with productivity and stuff like that in, in all, in all areas. Um, but I felt like I was competing with a lot of other people in that space in kind of the optimization productivity space, like Tim Ferriss and other people yeah. like that. Um, and whenever I did a podcast that was strictly just focused on productivity, uh, I, it didn't do too well. Um, it didn't, it, it, it has never resonated as much as the high intensity training stuff. That could be because I haven't built an audience in the kind of productivity space as much as the high intensity training space. Um, but, but who knows? But I decided, I, I reread a book called The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. And in that book, there's a chapter called The Law of Category. And basically, the law of category is that if you want to build a successful business, uh, it will serve you much better if you can create a new category, because if you create a new category, you're not competing with anyone. You know, if you, as soon as you're second or third into an existing, excuse me, into an existing category, you're competing with those guys who already got a really you know, strong position in that category. Um, and it's very, very difficult to, to grow a business in that position. So 
I kind of thought, well, where where am I where am I strong right now? And I think I've got a pretty strong position in high intensity training podcasting, right? Not Definitely. obviously. So you have got like Drew, who's got high intensity training blogging. I think he's probably the number yeah. one blog, right? But like, I feel like I have a strong position in a podcasting realm. Um, but I'm also really passionate about business and high intensity training businesses. So I wanted to just basically combine the two and have, make the podcast about that. I did think, and I am thinking about creating two podcasts, one focused on high intensity training and the other one focused on high intensity training business, but it's just too much work right now to start a new podcast. So I figured right now I just, that, that would be the focus point. So it's all about, for me, it's a decision based on focusing on categories. If that makes sense. Well, you know, you're, you're on the right track. I mean, you got sponsors. So that's, that's a plus right there. Thank you. Hey, um, yeah, my brother's here. He wants to ask you a question. Go for it. Go for it. I can, I can run over if you need. No worries. <laughs> Come visit. We'll show you, we'll show you a good time. Anyway, uh, I was going to ask you about, I noticed a lot of people talking about differentiation in the hit space. Now, I think my philosophy on HIT is well, the way we train it at the studio was, um, you know, the way Arthur P. Jones meant it to be and the way uh, Mike Menser, you know, meant it to be, you know, brief and frequent and intense. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a lot of differentiation going, you know, going away from that sort of training or it wouldn't it be high intensity strength training to begin with. And my question is things like CrossFit where there's not a lot of differentiation from, you know, CrossFit gym to CrossFit gym or wherever where they're training at the park, yet it's exploded so much. And a lot of times there's not even a lot of expertise in the trainers. Um, how is HIT going to get to that level without having to focus on being different? I mean, there's no point. I mean, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're taking what Arthur Jones and Mike Menser did. And that's uh, that's the contention I have in the industry. Everyone's trying to split and do different things. And people aren't getting the HIT name. You know, they don't know. Is it HIT? Is it super slow? Is it, you know, something else? I just want to market HIT. Yeah. That's the million-dollar question, right? <laughs> I, I ask this question all the time. like. How, how can we make just standard high intensity training, which we, you know, we all love? Uh, how can we make that really, really popular? And I remember Doug telling me, I think it was like the first interview I did with Doug. He was explaining that like the pendulum is going to swing the other way. He was like, you know, high intensity training and high intensity interval training is really picking up popularity, but it's just a matter of time till the pendulum swings the other way and knocks us off the top. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then all the, Right, you know what I'm saying? And then all the mainstream health and fitness bullshit just takes over again. Um, even though it's scientifically like just, just cannot compete with high intensity training or even high intensity interval training, really, from a efficiency and a f efficacy, uh, you know, safety point of view. And it baffles me. I think it baffles all of us. Um, but it's just, it's just, I, I think it's just the media. The weight of the media um, and the investment in the existing health and fitness industry, that is what we're competing against. And until we can overcome that and unturf that, I think we're always going to struggle. So I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer. Um, I think it's, I think, you know, Doug, Doug did a, Doug's, I don't know if you guys uh, read Doug's blog these days. He does this like one long blog post thing <laughs> uh, where you, you have to kind of read all of them. Um, anyway, D Doug will tell you himself he's not a, a website expert. Um, but he did a, a blog post recently. I think it's one of his first ones on his new website, which was basically about how... Um, you know, about this whole thing. Like, how do we get high-intensity training businesses you know, moving forward and, and get more exposure for the, for this way of working out. And he was just, I think his overall message was like, guys, we need to do this together. We need to stop competing with one another and hating on each other and just working together. And I, I want to be part of this movement. Like, yeah, of course, of course, I don't agree with, always with the purists. I don't agree with these guys who are taking high intensity training and then doing this strange thing on the side, which is their differentiator or whatever. But like, I think we just need to, at the end of the day, if we all need to just kind of, I don't know, come together to promote, because because it doesn't matter that we're not totally, that everyone's not kind of a purist, right? Um, it's just so that, you know, all these, all these organizations are following high intensity training principles and that's what's important. So 
Yeah, I don't. That's a satisfactory answer. It's it's a it's not something I, I really know to be honest with you. It's it's a dilemma in the industry, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think what we do is we tell we tell our clients that hey, this is what Arthur P. Jones did and Mike Menser did. That that's the sort of training we're doing. We're always um, we're giving credit where credit is due. We're not rebranding and saying this is our thing. We came up with it because we we didn't. It's been there for a long time, yeah. but uh, I'm, I'll let you guys finish. Thanks for answering my question, Lawrence. Ah, you're most welcome. And just on that, you're doing a great thing, you guys, um, by by doing a, a you know a, a training business in high intensity training. It's, it's excellent. I love just seeing more and more people doing this, and it's cool that you guys have started this YouTube channel. How long have you been doing this for now? Gosh, not long. Yeah. I like like he's our fourth. You're our fourth uh, interview. Your first oh. one was Dr. I'm Four, first. Was Dr. Yeah, first one was Dr. Doug, but uh, I wasn't even prepared because I came. My brother said, hey, you're doing the interview. I didn't shave. I, didn't, I go, what? <laughs> so I just winged it, man. I mean, it took me a few months before I wanted to listen to it. I sounded like a, a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but the questions were good, though. After I listened to like, actually, the questions were pretty good because, uh, I mean, come on, it's Dr. McGuff. So how could you go wrong with that, right? Man, like... Yeah, no, you did a great job. I really enjoyed the interview. Um, and Doug, Doug does make it easy because he, uh, he's just a great guy and just intellectually honest. And he's the type of guy you can ask like one question. He'll just go off on one. I remember once he, he, he tested me. He said like, Oh, what do you think? I asked him some really like complicated question about like sleep and, cravings for sugar or something like that or lack of sleep and he just said oh what do you think and i tried to answer it and i was like oh i don't know and he kind of rescued me um so no uh good good yeah i mean i think everyone should just contact doug he's gonna hate me for this if you're looking to start a podcast just contact doug because he'll happily do your first episode for you he's so busy that guy's <laughs> oh yeah busy. oh my gosh he's like all uh he's a ghost anyway right i think he's writing a new book so well do you have your own book though, right? Uh, I do, sure. I do, but it's no, it's no body by science. Um, no, it's, I have a couple of, um, fat loss books that I put together on Amazon that are kind of like very, succinct how to's um using something called the slow carb diet that Tim Ferriss came up with um which worked for me very well uh, as worked for many people from a kind of compliance perspective on losing body fat so i kind of took the slow carb diet and the high intensity training concepts and put it into one ebook so yeah you can pick those up on if you go to booksbylawrence.com or .co.uk i should know that or just go to my website corporatewarrior.org you can see links to those so well, there you go, folks. You guys heard that. Go out there and buy his book if you guys want to lose weight and look like Lawrence Neal. I hope you enjoyed that. Before you head off, head on over to corpwarrior.com to get your free ebook with six interview transcripts with some of my top guests, including Dr. Doug McGuff, Drew Bay, and Bill Day Simone, on how to optimize muscle gain, fat loss, and overall health in an efficient, effective, and sustainable way. These transcripts are not verbatim, deliberately. Instead, they've been transcribed in an easy read format to make it more enjoyable and easier for you to quickly pick out what you need and start getting results. To get your ebook, head on over to corpwarrior.com, that's C-O-R-P warrior.com, and enter your email address. Then check your email for an email from me with a confirmation link. Once you click the link, you will be instantly redirected to a PDF version of the transcripts. This episode is brought to you by ARX, the most innovative, efficient, and effective all-in-one exercise machines I've ever seen. I was really impressed with my ARX workout. The intensity and adaptive resistance was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I love how the machine enables you to increase the negative load to fatigue target muscles more quickly, and I love how the workouts are effortlessly quantified. The software tracks maximum force output, rate of work, total amount of work done, and more in front of you on screen, allowing you to compete with your previous performance to give you and your clients real-time motivation. The ARX uses a computer-controlled motor to give you the exact amount of resistance your clients need 100% of the time. This means that the resistance can never become dangerous, it's intuitive and simple to use, and can provide you with all the results you and your clients are looking for in a fraction of the time. ARX is highly effective and efficient in delivering all of the benefits of exercise, including increased strength, muscle mass, cardiovascular conditioning, bone mineral density, and injury recovery. As well as being utilized 
utilized by many high intensity training trainers to deliver highly effective and efficient workouts to their clients, ARX comes highly recommended by world class trainers and brands, including Bulletproof, Tony Robbins, and Ben Greenfield Fitness. To find out more about ARX and how you can get $1,000 off software licensing when you place an order, that's right, guys, $1,000 off, please go to arxfit.com and mention Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. So, again, to get $1,000 off software licensing when you order, head on over to arxfit.com and enter Corporate Warrior in the How Did You Hear About Us field. This podcast is brought to you by HitUni.com. HitUni.com are a provider of amazing online courses for high-intensity training qualifications. HitUni comes highly recommended by the best in the field, including Body by Science co-author Dr. Doug McGuff, Discover Strength CEO Luke Carlson, and trainer and founder of Bay.com, Drew Bay. It was founded by my friend, author, and longtime personal trainer, Simon Shawcross, who's also been a guest on the podcast. Simon has 15 years' experience training clients and is supervisor of a 15 15,000 high intensity training workouts. Using knowledge from experts like Skylar Tanner, Dr. James Steele, Dr. Ellington Darden, Hit Uni is a goldmine for learning everything to do with high intensity training. The courses are delivered online through the website where you can learn via a variety of multimedia materials at your own pace. There's online support and a discussion forum where you can share ideas and ask for help. To learn more about high intensity training and improve my own results, I started their personal trainer course. The content is amazing, the courses are really easy to follow, and each section is organized into bite sized chunks that give you a real sense of achievement after you complete each one. I should also mention there is a DIY course, so this is the course for you if you're not necessarily a personal trainer but you want to learn more about high intensity training and how to implement it for maximum benefit in your own exercise regime. To get your exclusive Corporate Warrior 10% discount, discount on any course you purchase simply head on over to hituni.com that's h-i-t-uni u-n-i.com and enter the coupon code cw10 that's cw in the number 10 so again head on over to hituni.com pick your course and enter the coupon code cw10 for 10% discount thank you for your support